And so basically it, it was a transition of leadership and um, it was not a positive transition. Uh. And I always, and again, I truly believe that we are, and no matter what transition it is in life, we have to go through those things because we are meant to move on right. to different areas of life. Because if not, then we won't explore or because we're safe, mm-hmm. you know, and if you're in a safe environment. That's where you stay. That's where you stay. So I, of course, stayed. Um, I was actually ready to quit. I had my resignation ready. It was in June of 2014. And then that's when some change started to happen with the uh. leadership. Once that started happening, um, I needed that. I needed to refocus my energy in a positive way. And I remember Wayne Dyer talking about Hay House Radio. And I thought, this is something that I need in my life. I can't listen to another country song, another (laughs) Britney Spears song. So I needed something to refocus my energy and my thoughts during my work time. And what's great, because you could just listen to it. Um, And I can remember um, it was Jennifer Grace and she was, it was at the end of 2014 and she was talking about some free um, online webinars, you know, something about procrastination and another one to get unstuck or find your purpose. And when I had listened to her, I knew there was something more. Uh She started talking about the creative insight journey and that's what it was called at the time. And it was, and that's what she said, you know, you don't have to be a creative being. We're all creative beings. We are born creative. Um, But it was somewhere if you were stuck in a job or didn't know which direction to go, left, right, straight. Um, So I, the class was, I think, 500 or, you know, for eight weeks, really. It was online with others. And I thought, well, that's not that bad. And I thought, you know, if I don't invest in myself, no one else is going to. So in my thoughts, I thought, you know, if I just had an extra hundred dollars, I would take this class if I just had an extra hundred. So at the time I was working with medical students and they were always so wonderful and would put cards under my door or, you know, they, they just were always very thoughtful. And one day there was a card under my door for a $100 Visa gift card. I'll be darned. So I knew the universe was telling me, this is the direction you need to go. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an awakening that after week week one was overload. Like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? This, <laughs> this, week two, it's when it started to click. And the way I was showing up, I... I guess I didn't really realize. Hmm. So there were, and each week just was, um, just each, you know, I kept peeling back a little bit more of that onion within myself and I'm still doing that today. It never stopped, no. but I, what it was, was the starting point. And I was able to mend relationships and say that I, the I'm sorry's and take accountability for my behavior and still be able to correct it because we all make mistakes, but it's also identifying that, oh, I said that, or I've treated someone this way, and I really don't want to show up that way anymore. How can I? We sometimes have to eat crow and right. apologize and, you know, hope that they do forgive us. And, you know, uh, my sister was a prime. I did not realize how I was showing up, where I was. A lot of it is expectations that we put on others. Yes. I expect you. To do this, right? And then if you don't live up to that expectation, then you're not a good person or whatever. Or you owe me. You hurt me. Right. So you right. owe me. I mean, I'm going to make you pay for that for the rest of your life because you you hurt me. Right. Well, that's just being human. Sometimes we do things <laughs> right. and, we don't re- and we don't realize it. So, you know, I could have missed out actually, you know, on the birth of, you know, of my niece mm. being in the room while she was born. You know, there's things that we real we have to realize that even it, it is difficult to own up, but the reward, the reward can be so, so amazing if, right. we, can, if we can really do that. So. Julia and I were just talking um, on our show this afternoon, The Passionate Pundits, about um, 
how holding and harboring resentment against other people it can manifest itself physically too. And so you really are just hurting yourself because so many times people might not have even meant it like that, you know. Absolutely. And, and we take it personally when really we shouldn't. We're not that important. And, and it's perception. I mean, yes. um, you can take any given circumstance in everyone's perception is like being mad being mad you could think that i was wow she must be really mad at me and not even think that it's national be mad day yeah yeah and you could say wow she was really mad at me last night so that's just one perception right of- right, right so i want to i i truly believe so after doing the work i i i know it works it works, and if you're, and it's still working. There's still days, and I'm like, oh, no judgment, right. no expectations. You know, there, you know, and and it's just constantly. But the learning thing is that growing. you're stopping yourself, right? I know you and I have had this talk before as well. Um, the the fourth agreement, the third, three agreements, and the fourth agreement that oh, yes. um, our book club read. Uh, I'll tell you, those books changed my life in a lot of ways. They were things that I kind of, I kind of knew already, but and they were put in such a simplified, down to earth way that it makes you go, "Oh yeah, now that's why. That's why it should be like that." And one of the big things is. Um, we do take things too personally that really we shouldn't because the other people might not have meant that. For example, you might have just stubbed your toe and I saw you coming across the street and I saw you get a bad look on your face without stubbing your toe, but I thought you were making it at me and so now I think you're mad at me. Right. Why should I think that your whole world revolves around me for one thing, and the fact that I assumed that it was directed at me when you merely stubbed your toe. I mean, it's just we the right. things that we read into other people, and we don't ask questions. No, we just assume we do, and that's actually there is a part uh, uh, week four where you learn to ask questions because again we just assume and we don't we aren't childlike anymore we don't question right. anything we just we're adults and we're right and that's just the way it is and we take take your actions how they connotate to me without you even know they, knowing right. that right yes yes that's relationships do that too i mean not not just friends but men women you come into relationships and friend relationships as well well this friend of mine really hurt me and so i know that you're probably going to so you might say something perfectly innocent and i might take it totally wrong right offensively right and oh she's just like all the other where all i would have had to say what did you mean by that and you could have and i'm like oh right Right. And I have become, there was a part of me that, not that I didn't care about people because I, I, I do, but I didn't care what came out of my mouth at times. And I have really, um, I guess I've become more respectful of others that when I am around them, I do, I am a little bit more mindful of my behavior because it is hurtful towards them or it's um it offends them do i think that a person should have to become someone they're not no but sometimes you just have to be that bigger person and just be more mindful of your actions so then you're not offending someone and then it co- and then it, then there's a little bit more peace right right you know, and I don't want to hurt anyone and I don't want to offend anyone. So there, there are some, some, uh, family actually that I have to, I have been much more mindful and it makes me, it's usually family, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. <laughs> I, and I, and it makes me sometimes upset, but at the other end of it, I feel that I am trying to practice what I'm 
reading exactly. and, and trying to be that high, being that higher part of myself that there's a time and a place. Right. Because you want, you don't want to pretend like you're somebody that you're not. Absolutely. Because you want people to like you who you are for who you are, or they're going to like a version of yourself and not really you. Right. But when it comes to family, it's a little bit different. It is. Sometimes it, it is. is. Yes. yes. And even if it's just for the two days that we're together every six months, I am very mind. I have within the last year and even last year, I have, I have apologized and said, if I have ever, you know, again, I'm taking those steps to mend again, where maybe I have hurt someone's feelings and it's never been intentional. It's a lot of times it's just out of to me. I think I'm funny and I'm, it's fun, but <laughs> others really don't find don't the think humor. It's that funny. Apparently not. So I am trying to be. I think you're funny. Thank you. Well, yeah. you might. Well, you may not, but oh. she's not your family. She's not my family. And that's but. the thing. Yep, you have to. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Family is just a little bit different. You do, especially because you don't live with them all the time. It's okay to walk on eggshells around them just to keep the peace. I think. Right. I really do. Right. And and I have to just say, it's not walking on eggshells. It's just really tapping into that higher, higher part right. of myself. And, and I can do, I can do right. that. And I can be that way. And, right. You know, if they're still, I guess, pissed off after the end of it, well, then that's what it is. I can't right. do, you know. You but can't. at least you know that you didn't, right? Right. right. I have tried. So. Well, that took an interesting turn, didn't it? It did. It did. I like when that happens. So, so we're going to take another um, quick little break. Oh, it's 8 o'clock it's eight already. O'clock. Holy moly. Where did the time go? Well, I love this. I don't Thank you know. for asking me to be on tonight. You're welcome. Wow, that was really fast. Hey, um, next week we have uh, Artisan Anne. Do you know her? No. She, um, we didn't start till just a little bit after 8, but it's been 57 minutes already. I, I'm, like, shocked. It did go really fast. Um, and that's why sometimes the show goes a little long. But Artisan Anne is this really cool lady. She's a, a self-taught chef and chocolatier Ooh. and she she's um very creative and like all of her foods are very artsy that's why she calls herself artisan Anne. and she ha- is uh coming here next week to be on the show but she's also going to do a chocolate workshop here on april 22nd Ooh. And you mark your calendars for that because we only have seating for 10 people. And it's $45, and you get to take home a bunch of chocolate. Samples. Yes. Yes, that you made, that you paint and make. It's going to be really fun. She's actually had people go and start businesses from the stuff that she's going to teach us in, in class on the 22nd. I like it. It is it really fun. So she'll be here next week. That's that's who our guest is. And very nice lady. Very interesting. You'll like her a lot. Artisan Anne next week. So um, right now you're teaching classes to um, to the young girls. To the young, grade, and yes. one, one boy. And one boy. Which is very interesting. I love it. That's very good. I love it. And I, I am, my hope is that... It'll just spread from there. Good, yes. That, uh, you know, I would love to get with different organizations. And we want you to start teaching some workshops here as well. I would say, um, I would, the way, because we don't, a lot of people don't like to do things in the summer. You know, who wants to work on themselves for an eight-week course in the summer when we could be on the beach. Right, good point. Although, unless we work on ourselves at the beach. Yeah, that's true. Uh, And you're going to be speaking at Diva Day. On May 20th. Yes. Which I'm very excited. And that would be a good time for people to kind of get a sense of yes. of you and very what you're excited. all about. Very excited. So you really, it shows that you really like doing what you're doing. I love what I do. You know, and I, all of us have, some of us have to do the nine to five job, but I really believe that 
you also have to have, if, if that's not your fulfillment, you have to find something that is. And this is my, for me, this is my fulfillment.